What is going on everyone? It is Conrad back with another video and today what we are going to be doing and I'm so excited for this video is we are going to be rederiving Newton's law of universal gravitation in Python using symbolic regression. Now in order to do this we're going to use a library called Pyser. Um, I'll put the link in the description but essentially what Pyser is going to allow you to do is it's going to use genetic programming, genetic algorithms, or algorithms that are acting like uh, um, what Darwin theorized is the nature of genetic evolution uh, in organisms, but as equations. So we'll see here in this little graphic that you have these equations that um, are rewarded or punished over the generations for fitting to the data. And so PySer is really interesting. It's a huge library. Um, there's a paper about it and everything. But it's going to allow us to use these genetic algorithms to uh, evolve, to, to make our own mutated equations. Um, and so in order to install PySer, you're going to have to install Julia uh, first, and then afterwards just with pip install PySer. Now I had some problems installing Julia, but it's nothing that a little stack overflow can't fix. Um, and then eventually you'll get to the actual code. So I'm going to explain this code. Um, essentially what we have here is first I'm going to make the data set and for the data set basically we're going to have the X's the input variables be mass 1 mass 2 and the radius as in the equation for Newton's law of universal gravitation and then the Y is simply going to be F or the the force vector that we get from that now I chose purposefully not to include uh, big G or g in this equation because since it's uh, 10 to the negative 11 uh, it was very very difficult actually for this equation for for um, Pyser to figure out what that value actually was so we're gonna pretend like we already have that and that we've just excluded it um, from our calculations in order to uh, add it in later as a, as a multiplier but yeah obviously not great but uh, still pretty cool because we're still plotting the linear relationship ultimately between mass 1, mass 2, and the radius. So you see here um, we have our input variables which is just a bunch of random variables for mass 1, mass 2, and radius. And then in our force vector we're actually multiplying the force by a noise variable. And so the noise is basically just going to make our data just a little bit inaccurate so that it's not perfect. Um, I have right here the standard deviation of the noise as uh, 0.01 and that's going to be multiplied to the entire force vector um, just in order to make things a bit more difficult for uh, PISER for the symbolic regression and also um, to replicate what would be a real life data driven scenario where the experimental data that you're getting might not be accurate in fact it might have a, a error ratio of about this this point oh one okay awesome so next after we've gotten our data we're going to import PISER um, and then simply all we're going to do in the model is we're going to declare a prox um, and there's more in the documentation about how all this works and even if you want to fine-tune this I decided to to start with like a pretty basic model um, just to not make things too complicated and to show how easy it is to, to rederive this equation using machine learning. Then we have number of iterations, just how many times it's going through. You make this higher, it's going to take longer, but you might find a better equation. We're going to start with the binary operators that we want it to use. So multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division, pretty standard. And then we're also going to include um, squaring, cubing, and then also just exponent. So raising something to a, to a given power. And there are many more unary operators that you can add to this, but I just added these three just to keep things simple. And obviously there's only one of these that we actually would even need for the equation, but we're just gonna make our program work a little harder than necessary because we're assuming a situation where we don't actually know exactly what the relationship is between these two variables. And so just to make things simpler again, we're gonna give ourselves some constraints so square we're talking about one, cube we're talking about one, exponent zero. And basically 
Um, it explains here in the comments. This is so that we don't uh, have too many redundancies where like we, you know, take the square of an exponent or something like that, which would just give the machine more work than it really needs. And it's the same thing with the complexity of operators. So essentially how the uh, program is um, testing itself is it's trying to find the equation that fits the best, but it's also looking for complexity. So it's going to score each equation that it makes on a level of complexity. And according to how complex the equation is, um, it's going to um, it's going to negatively uh, bias that, which means that you're not going to get some super long, super complex equation, ideally, um, that fits really well with the data, but we're also prioritizing simplicity, which is one of the, one of the main benefits of symbolic regression, because um, if we can find simple representations in data, uh, we save a lot of the trouble of, for instance, having a neural network, and I'll show you in a bit, um, sometimes a neural network isn't the best option, and it's better to just see if you can find an equation for what you're doing. So precision, we're just going to go to 64. You can raise it, you can lower it, uh, not too important. And then for our less function, we're doing mean squared error. So basically we're just taking the average distance um, that our target is from the predicted value. Uh, that's going to be our loss function. And then we're just gonna fit the model and we're gonna print the model. All right, so let's run our model. And you'll see it's using the Julia backend and we have some files that are gonna pop up here that are basically saving the weights um, of our equation, which will allow us to go back to any of our previous searches, any of our previous runs of the program and allow the program to continue uh, improving itself uh, as we run it, which is really cool. All right, so now we see that it started making equations and we can see some of the equations here. Um, so far, most of them are pretty bad, not at all like what we are expecting, but by the end of this process, we'll see what we get. All right, so now we're at the end of this process and we can see a whole list of equations of varying complexity. You can see the complexity factor here on the right. Um, so the first pick that it does is just literally just a number because um, obviously that's not very complex, but you see we have a decent amount of loss. Um, two, to the, two times 10 to the nine is pretty big. Um, and we see that the equations start looking better and better as we increase complexity until eventually we get, ah, what's that? Our equation. Now, obviously it's in kind of a weird form. For instance, I would just move this uh, x1, which is to say mass one, over here um, with the x0, and x2 means radius, just in case you were wondering. Um, but we found the equation effectively. And you can see it's also produced some other equations, and I think the reason why we have these long numbers here is to account a bit for the noise that we added to the data set, because this equation is not 100% accurate. You can see the loss on it is still pretty high, even though it is the correct equation, it's just we accounted for a potential experimental error. But anyways, I find this super, super cool that uh, we can use machine learning to design it kind of, kind of work backwards and define um, symbolic expressions within a given data set. And what's really cool about this is that we only used a thousand data points, which is not that much. Now let's compare what we just did here, and it only took a couple minutes, and our program found the equation even faster. It's just I let it uh, run to the end um, to see if it would find it another way because sometimes it'll find the same equations but in, in weird ways. Um, let's take a look at what would happen if we did this with a neural network. So here I'm doing exactly the same thing, except for this time I'm gonna be putting everything into a neural network. So let me run, and we're just using um, TensorFlow Keras for this. We're gonna do a train test split, fit the model. And you can see now I didn't do anything fancy, but I've played around with this model a bit and we don't really see any learning process. The loss stays about the same. And what also is problematic about this is that we don't actually have uh, a full picture of what the neural network is doing. Whereas here with the symbolic regression, we know what this equation means. We understand the relationship. So. 
uh, kind of like the black box, the mask of machine learning, of neural networks, has been unveiled with symbolic regression. And so to highlight this, I have this little slide here um, where we're basically going to compare the difference, the use cases between symbolic regression and neural networks. So advantage of symbolic regression is that it's interpretable. Okay, I look at this equation right here. I know what I'm talking about. Um, not necessarily always the case with a neural network. Um, so this is really good for finding those simple relationships between things, like for instance, the simple relationships uh, that govern a lot of um, physics. Also, this works with scalability. So that same equation that works on the just kind of arbitrary random values that I assigned will work on much, much larger values. So I don't have to worry, for instance, if I uh, ran symbolic regression on a data set measuring the force between, I don't know, like pebbles, it, the equation would still work for planets. And you don't necessarily get that same security with a neural network approach because um, you're always, uh, you don't know if you're overfitting uh, necessarily to the data set that you have. Symbolic regression in a lot of ways is more generalizable. Of course, neural networks come with the black box. And the advantage of this is that you can map more complex relationships. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to use symbolic regression for something like image recognition or, I don't know, fingerprint recognition, things like that. Um, so neural networks are really good at measuring these complex relationships. But it's because of that that they're also prone to overfitting and need more data. Symbolic regression doesn't need as much data. If we had lowered the data set to, say, just 100 data points, it actually would have been easier for the symbolic regression algorithm to find that linear relationship, which is what I did when I lowered this uh, num samples variable to 100. So all in all, we see with symbolic regression and neural networks, we're going to get better overall accuracy for certain scenarios. And in the case of symbolic regression, you very easily could make a neural network that is more accurate in terms of the loss um, to the data set that you give it than the symbolic regression equation. But of course, because the symbolic regression equation is representing the true nature uh, of how these elements interact with each other, it's going to be more correct, even if that isn't reflected in the loss. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Any suggestions for a topic I should go over, leave them also down in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. Peace.